Welcome everyone to the Low Fi Poly Side Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pickering. That's right. Low Fi as in low fidelity, low quality, in your face, messy as can be global news show. Here we're going to talk about that famous question. What's going on in the world today? And it's Wednesday. Time for that Low Fi Global News, fresh off that press. We're starting off in Africa and the country of Uganda with the international section of the AP. Despite election loss, Uganda's Bobby Wine wins growing power. Singer-turned-politician Bobby Wine didn't win the presidency. The incumbent president, Museveni, won with 58% of the vote and will continue ruling the country for his sixth consecutive term in office. 35 years and counting now. That's a pretty big feat. What Bobby Wine's political party did win, though, was 56 seats in parliament, the most of any opposition group in the government. And his political party is super young, just only six months old. This is an incredible achievement in any country. And Bobby Wine himself had 34% of the presidential vote. That's no small thing in any country with a president ruling for 35 years straight. We'll definitely be keeping an eye on this, as I'm sure we'll be hearing more from Bobby Wine in the future. Next up, we're jumping to Russia. Source, the world of Reuters. Jailed Kremlin critic Navalny makes allegations of Putin's wealth ahead of protest. Okay, let's unpack this one. The Russian politician, pro-democracy leader, and one of President Putin's loudest critics, the man known as Navalny, that was poisoned last summer and went to Germany for treatment. He has returned to Russia, where he was promptly arrested for parole violation. Sure, Russia, you go with that one. However, Navalny released a video just before he was arrested, alleging that this palace that he shows, worth over a billion dollars with money paid for by taxpayers, belongs to President Putin and illustrates just how corrupt the Kremlin really is. Protests are planned this weekend throughout Russia to object to Navalny's arrest. Keep your eyes open and ears to the ground. Lots going down in Russia this weekend, lo-fi listeners. Now, moving forward because we never move on from anything. Oh, no, we don't. To Thailand we go. Source, the Asia section of the BBC. Thai woman jailed for 43 years for criticizing monarchy. Heads up, listeners. You may want to back away from your headphone speakers or simply turn down the volume for a second. Because we're about to get unplugged in here. 43 years for insulting the monarchy? Come on, Thailand! We've talked about these Lays Majesty's Law before, where you can get 15 years for insulting the royal family. And we've also talked about how you can't have laws like this and call yourself a democracy. The woman posted clips from a podcast. Not her podcast. Someone else's podcast. And posted these clips to YouTube and Facebook and still got charged with this archaic law. What's more, she originally got 87 years. But since she pled guilty to the 29 counts of this shit, they reduced her sentence. Well, Thailand, you get no thank you from us on this move. And we'll be definitely keeping an eye on what's going up with this situation, as there are 13 other people facing charges for insulting the monarchy as well. Oh, breathe. Switching gears, and our following story comes from Tunisia in North Africa. The headline from the AP International section, Outreach by Tunisian Leaders Failed to Quell Youth Unrest. Wake up, Lofa Nation. Tunisia is the birthplace of the Arab Spring. And this situation looks very similar to what went down 10 years ago, when mass protests forced the ousting of the president and gave way to democracy in the country, a movement that rocked the world and over 26 other countries. As the article reports, it's estimated that about one-third of the entire youth population in the country are unemployed, a statistic that is strikingly close to that in 2010. I'm not saying much more on this one right now other than keep one eye on Tunisia, people. This could be a sign of much to come. And a last piece of news to send you on your way for the day, and this one, well, because everyone deserves a little bit of magic in their life. Source, the oddly enough section of Reuters. Magicians mark 100 years of sawing people in half. Oh, magic. That thing no one believes in, but everyone loves. Magic, the stuff dreams are made of. Magic, thank you for over a hundred years of captivating our imaginations and keeping us wondering about all the possibilities out there in the universe. As all of you go about your day-to-day, no matter where you are or what you're doing, let your day be filled with a little bit of magic and make the world a better place by sharing the magic inside of you with someone else. All of you are magical to me. 
And that's a brief snapshot of what's going on in the world today. Stay tuned for tomorrow's episode of Lo-Fi Global News. And always remember, Lo-Fi poli is more than just me. It's the we that we be. Thanks for listening. Stay safe. Wash those hands. And I'll see you on the next episode of the Lo-Fi Poli-Sci Podcast. Pickering, signing off.